Well, I'd be preferring, uh, rather than doing this sort of season-ending press conference here in Auburn, I'd rather be doing some sort of a press conference prior to a game against UConn in Boston. But uh, it didn't, it didn't, uh, didn't work out that way. Um, we, uh, uh, we're still, you know, feel the sting and the pain of, of uh, not performing well enough in the postseason to advance. And yet, we all know that, you know, 60, I guess 67 teams are going to lose sometimes before they want to. Um, I've been on the other side of that uh, upset. Um, and uh, so I know that's what March Madness is all about. That's what makes the tournament so uh, so exciting and so special and so rare. Um, and, uh, you know, in spite of losing uh, Chad Baker Mazzara to a flagrant two, three minutes into the game, when you're up 10 with seven to go, we're in a pretty good spot. Um, we turn the ball over. Uh, on a number of occasions, and most of the stuff we turned it over on was stuff that you would take. Like the three of them I can recall, you know, we got the ball into Janai really tight, and he got and he got stripped, you know. Um, or Jalen Williams on a duck in, he dribbled it off his foot. And we've seen him make that play a, a million times. Uh, Denver came off a double stagger, um, got his jersey held, and they, they got fouled. They didn't call it, but and it turned the ball over. Um, Trey throws it away going back door to KD um, on a play that was really not designed for the back door. It was designed to get KD to block to set a back screen, and it was just not a, not – we just didn't execute. Uh, KD got a rebound and pushed the break and, um, and turned the ball over, um, not being the point guard, and we've seen it before. And, you know, it sort of just – a lot of the mistakes were – some of the some of the stuff that you read their ugly head that you know have happened over a period of time that just kind of sort of the perfect storm. On the other end, they they either score or got fouled every time, um, and um, and so it was uh, you know very very difficult. Um, the fact that we could lose to Yale, the fact that we did lose to Yale, and I think one of the things I've, I've been really careful about both in my post game comments as well as try to be careful today is. By providing too many excuses, I take away from what Coach said was, you know, the greatest, you know, maybe the greatest win in Yale basketball history, that we were the best team that they'd, that they'd had maybe had ever beaten. Um, and I believe him. So to provide too many excuses takes away from the fact that they made shots and they made plays and they made their free throws and, um, and had a historic upset. Um, you know, I, I, I made the comment after the game, I'll make it again. Um, you know, I thought that the flagrant two could have been a flagrant one, and I don't think a whole lot of people would have commented on it. That it could it have been a flagrant two? Yes, it could have been. But three minutes into the game when there really wasn't anything that where we were having any problems on the floor with you know, temperatures rising or things like that, um, it, 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 I knew right there we had, we were, we had trouble. We were in trouble. I mean, I knew right there because um, they had one great defender and we thought that they'd put that defender on Chad and therefore our point guards would have some freedom to do a few more things. Um, but when we lost Chad and they had one great defender on our point guards, the only playmaking guard I really had left was Denver. And he did a great job. Denver did a phenomenal job. and um, But it, you know, there was a reason why Chad Baker was – SEC All Tournament team. He was one of the best players in postseason in the SEC. Um, I thought the fact that it was retaliatory that five seconds earlier Chad Baker got hit in the throat uh, on a flagrant uh, play that was missed uh, should have been taken into consideration. And I just thought the finality of, of, you know, you work all year long to put yourself in that position and then on a judgment call for moving from the game, I just thought it was too excessive. Um, at the same time, on the other side of the coin, we're, we're, we're handling that with total accountability. Chad made a, a mistake. He should have never done it. He should have walked away. Um, there were several times during the course of the season where he made the same mistake. And so what a really difficult way to learn from that mistake. At the same time, I would, I would also like to remind our fans that 
and, and anybody listening, that Chad owned up to that mistake, and he's apologized for that mistake, and he's taken uh, responsibility for it, and although the consequences were, you know, really, really significant, and he feels really bad, and he's struggling with that right now. So I'm just going to tell the Auburn family, while I know you're disappointed, okay, if somebody was messing with your son, you'd just got to stand up for your son a little bit, wouldn't you? Stop messing with my son. Stop it. He apologized. He made a mistake. I'm calling you out. I'm not, I'm not having it. For those on social media that want to continue, unfollow those people. Stop it. And part of it, what happens is, we get so excited as fans. My goodness gracious, this was a team that we enjoyed watching as much as anybody. It's a really fun team to watch. This was a team that was not a preseason top 25 team. I never, I never said that. I thought this was a good team that had a chance to be very good. It turned out to be a very good chance with the team that had a chance to be great. Iowa State and Auburn were the only two teams that got into the top 10 that weren't picked in the top 10 or top 25 which tells you that I think this team worked really, really hard. The fact that we could lose to Yale speaks volumes about the 27 games that we did win. Probably at Appy State, maybe Kentucky at home, but it's, it's, they played so very, very well. This team beat the teams they were supposed to beat almost every night. And, and for that, I compliment them, and for that, I'm proud of them because they, they prepared, and they trained, and they worked hard, and they played well together, and Obviously, they were unselfish, and so it was a great season. They won a championship, the fourth team in seven years, the fourth different team in seven years to win a championship in the SEC. SEC championships matter. They matter to me. I think they matter to our fans. I think they, they matter to the Auburn family. And I don't know that anybody over the last seven years in the SEC can say that they've won four different teams have won championships so at the end of the day if that's not good enough I don't know what is and our guys are our guys our guys are a little sensitive to it and and, and here's the last thing I'm not anybody I'm not I'm not asking anybody to kiss my ass okay I'm not you want to write good things or say good things great I hope I'll work really hard to earn those things and I will give, I will, uh, you know, at some point, and maybe it's in the future, maybe it's in the past, I'll give you, re I'll give you reason to criticize. You want to criticize the L game, criticize the L game. Let's tear it up. Let's ask questions about the L game. I'll try to explain why we lost that lead. That's, have at it. But this was a great team at Auburn. And I'm very proud of them. Questions? BP, I feel like you're having to defend the work that you're, you've done at Auburn. Is that kind of what you're doing right now? Because that, that seems crazy to me. I mean, you've, you've won a lot, like you said. Yeah. Well, I think what happens is because they're – what happens is you know, people get disappointed because their expectations change, and they should change. The expectations for Auburn basketball should be way higher than they were 10 years ago. I guess a little bit – forward looking. I know we don't know entirely what's going to happen yet in terms of just roster movement, but you talked so much kind of before the season about how you took a different transfer portal approach, kind of looking to build the depth with this team. Do you kind of want to recreate that with next season's roster? Or kind of what is your approach to yeah. this offseason? It, 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 there's no advantage in being 64 years old right now and having done this since 1978. You know, it's, it's completely different. We got beat, and we got home Saturday morning at 4.30 in the morning, right from Montgomery. My staff and I were in the office at, at 10, and I had to set an alarm to get up and get in at 10 o'clock. And we worked Saturday and Sunday evaluating what's in the portal, what we thought would, might be coming in the portal, our own team. And would you be shocked to know that I've been on the road recruiting Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I just got back late last night, and I'm leaving in about an hour. So it's changed. Um, 
you were, were obviously, um, you know, not in control of everything. I mean, the idea, the combination of the NIL and the transfer portal and the automatic eligibility right away, it's just that is uncharted waters for all of us. Like, like literally, um, uh, an, uh, an NIL agent could literally call any player on my roster and offer them some sort of an NIL deal, some pl NIL deal somewhere else, and it's no longer tampering. I can tell you we're not going to do that. Just because it's legal, I promise you, we, we're not doing that. Um, and I'll fire a guy that ever tries to do it. We just, we don't, that's just not what I believe in. But we don't, and we don't have to. You don't have to do it that way. Um, so we met with, we met with uh, almost all the players and, uh, and, and gave almost all the, player, uh, the, the opportunity to meet and, and things like that, uh, see where they're at. And I feel really good about our meetings. Um, uh, you know, I was, I was, uh, I want to, I want to congratulate KD on three years of being in the NCAA tournament of a, of a regular season championship of a tournament championship. It's a pretty good three year run. It really is. Um, what I anticipated in my meetings with KD was that our roster in the backcourt, particularly with Denver Jones returning, it's going to be about a little bit more of the same for KD. In other words, coming off the bench, not quite being able to be as uh, as uh, uh, play as freely as he would have liked to play. There are just only so many minutes, only so much opportunity. And then with a the chance of perhaps having a lot of other guys back who are also really good, you know, we, we just talked about the fact that would, would the joy of the game be more if perhaps he was someplace else and had more of an opportunity to do, to do more of what KD does. And so our, uh, our, our discussion was really, really good. Um, KD Johnson will return to Auburn to receive his degree when the time comes. He's really close to his degree, and he perhaps could go someplace else and maybe get that degree in this next year, but he really wants to be a, a, a unit short. He wants an Auburn degree. So does his family. So when he's done playing wherever he goes and plays, you know, we're going to make that happen. Bruce, you talked about really liking uh, this past year's team. Uh, when you sort of visualize building next year's team, how much of this year's team do you want to see in that team? And, and what are some things maybe you want to be a little different? Um, that's a great question. Um, look, we had between Dylan Carwell and Janai Broom, and Jalen Williams and Cheney Johnson, man, those four guys gave us as good a front line as as we would play against. And we pounded that ball inside of those guys, and they did inside-out things. And I think with all four of those guys, you know, Jalen Williams was all-conference finally, right? Janai Broom was an All-American. And, and again, you know, you talk about – you talk about – you know, progress. You talk about player development. Talk about player development. You know, Janai Broom um, starts at Moorhead State, and you know, he goes there as a freshman. He's not very heavily recruited, uh, no Power Five offers, and he just goes down there and is the player of the year down there. You know, and in his sophomore year, he they laid him some championships, and he's has two great years. Now he's at Auburn. Will his game translate? Can he play? Is he athletic enough, fast enough? Can he go in the SEC? All he does is be, is be all conference in the SEC first year, you know, take us to the second round. Um, and then comes back and really wanted to be an All-American really badly. Um, and um, I think the combination of him, his efficiencies, he improved from two, he improved from three, he improved from the foul line, he improved his assist turnover ratio, he improved defensively. And as a result of his improvement and us finishing a regular season, you know, ranked in the top 10, he was one over a handful of guys that weren't on the preseason All-American team that was on the postseason, I mean, at the end of the year. Again, progress, work, um, not just not crowned, but, again, with a chip on his shoulder, not, you know, not, not the preseason All-League guy, but the, when, the, when the thing was over, so very, very, very proud of Janai. And, uh, you know, Dylan, if he played more, either Janai Broom or Dylan Caldwell could have been the defensive player of the year in, in my mind. Um, 
And then when Jalen Williams gets hurt and all of a sudden Chaney Johnson's role changes, boom, we go to Georgia and he's lights out and he plays really well down the stretch the rest of the season. Those four guys, we had the advantage on the front line uh, almost every night. And with the exception of Jalen Williams, who was a top 75 high school player, Dylan Carwell wasn't, Chenny Johnson wasn't, Chennai Broom wasn't. And the McDonald's All-Americans. Not even Burger King. No. And so as a coach, as a teacher, and somebody that wants to, like, talk about Auburn, that's, to me, man, those guys have worked really hard and and uh, been loyal to Auburn. And so, you know, we'll see what comes back there, you know. Love to have them all back. And if we, if we can – we could have another dominating front line next year, but that's still got to work itself out. We don't. We just won't know. Um, another thing to kind of work at point guard when you bring Tahad in, you had two young guys coming back. Is that is that kind of the thing that you just need yeah. to, to sort itself out? Like, how are y'all approaching this at, at this point in the offseason? It's, it's a really good time. Really good question. Tahad's not a point guard. This is what he's got the size of a point guard. But everybody kind of assumes that Tahad was going to come in and be our point guard. He's not. Tahad is a scorer. He is an incredible athlete. He is. Um, he can make plays on both ends of the floor. He's going to be one of the. He's going to be one of the fastest, quickest, most explosive little guards I've ever had. But he's not a true point guard. Now, can he play some? He might. But I, I actually think early in his career, I think I'm going to try to play him off the ball. And. Let him do what he do. Get buckets, right? Get buckets. Um, which may help you understand why the why the roster has moved in the position it's moved a little bit now. So, yeah. First, when it comes to Janai, it seems like maybe that's a situation you guys would want to know about quickly because the guys you're looking at in the portal, is that is that sort of an accurate assessment of the, of the conversations you're having with him? You know, I want to let the guys, I want to let the guys make, make these decisions when they and their families are comfortable making these decisions. Obviously, the sooner they make them, the, the better, you know. Um, and for both, I think, them and the program moving forward. We were talking earlier about recruiting and just how different everything is. Uh, there's a lot of talk in football about like changing the calendar and all that. Is how tough is it for y'all? Like when y'all look at the portal and y'all are at the SEC tournament and guys are already getting in and all that. Like, is that something that you're really wanting to see change just because of of the timing of everything? Well, I don't know what influence that I have over change. Um, I love the one-time transfer exemption. I think it's fine. Look, guys. If you followed my career, I've always had transfers sit out. Like I love when transfers come in and sit out, and get and then the following year they're ready. They're ready to go. You know, Samir Dowdy was a good example of that. Um, uh, 2018, we had a terrific power forward. I'm 64 years old. My, my names are messed up. Um, but um, I, I don't think that. You should sometimes sitting out gets looked at like a penalty. Um, sometimes in sitting out and you're working on your body and you're working on your game and you're working on your academics, you're really not sitting out. You're just not playing. Um, but now what we obviously have created with this tr with the transfer thing is at the end of every year, you know, everybody everybody can stay and everybody can leave and and uh, there's just there's just no order to it. One great thing about being at Auburn, guys like it here. They appreciate the opportunity to play here. They love their school. They love the jungle. They love and appreciate the support they get. So in this crazy world of NIL and Portal, we have a huge advantage at Auburn. Huge. They want the, the kids want to stay. 
And they don't want to stay just because of me. I guarantee you. They've got a lot easier coaches to play for than me. They want to stay here because they love Auburn. And Auburn family. That's facts. Talk about Janai earlier. Obviously, he had a great season. Is it a realistic possibility that he could be here next year? I mean, can could that happen? Sure. Absolutely. It's one of his options um, would be to come back. Yeah. NIL would be a huge part of that, right? Well, you've, got that. A way, you've got a way what – you know, what the NIL could be versus what, you know, being a two-way contract or a second round or Europe or things like that. And that's something I think his family is in the process of doing right now with Janai.